Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we are back exploring more culinary magic with my good friend, the air fryer. We've done the chicken wing. We've done the French fry. We've crowned winners for both. But today we are exploring another staple of fried goodness, the chicken tender, one of my favorites. So today we're gonna be setting up a controlled experiment with proper variables, a bunch of different trials, possibly some tribulations. Ow, ow. All with the goal of crowning the perfect air fryer chicken tender. So before we get into the trials, we've got to go over some ground rules because if we're gonna crown the perfect chicken tender, we need consistency. We need those controlled variables throughout the entire experiment. So the first variable is the seasoning and the sauce. What I'm gonna do for every single chicken tender is leave everything completely unseasoned and I'll only be seasoning it with salt at the very end when it comes out of the air fryer just to keep things consistent and easy. Now for the sauce, there's obviously so many delicious things you can dip a chicken tender in, but for me, the king of all chicken tender sauces is the honey mustard. More specifically, the creamy honey mustard, which couldn't be easier to make. You've got three ingredients, honey, mustard, and mayo. You add them to a bowl in equal parts, mix them together, and boom, there you go. I don't know which fast food chain was the original one to carry this, but my brother was always just preaching the word around the house of the creamy honey mustard, and it just became the ultimate sauce in our household, so thank you, Josh. The next controlled variable is the actual chicken we're using. Now, traditionally for a chicken tender, I would say 90% of the time you're gonna see white meat, chicken breast, but there's no reason you can't use dark meat. For me at home, I generally just use whatever I have. Just remember to take the cooking times into account. Of course, with dark meat, it's gonna dry out a little slower than white meat and take a little longer to cook. So for me, I had some chicken thighs with the bone in and the skin on. So I just did a quick little butcher job on that to make them skinless and boneless. And then when it comes to slicing these up, there's a really easy way to do it. You locate the actual chicken tender on the bread which is this little piece right here. And it should peel away pretty naturally from just a quick tug. And then once you have the actual chicken tender, just sort of copy that size with the other cuts. And what I like to do is just kind of move the chicken around to get the proper cuts. So those pieces are nice and even and they're all cooking at the same timing, which is the most important. And for the chicken thigh, I just kind of cut naturally around the seams. And if you're using the seams, you're generally gonna get more of a chicken nugget, but it's all right that it's a little smaller because again, they cook just a little bit longer than the white meat. So let's talk about batters and breading. Now, generally wet batters are just not a good idea in the air fryer. I've tried them before, they don't work. But for the sake of this experiment, I'm gonna make a quick chicken wet batter with a little bit of cornstarch, a little bit of flour and some baking soda and some ice cold water. Whisk that up until you get a thick batter. I'm gonna dip one dark meat and one white meat in there, coat them with oil and air fry them for a few minutes. Let's see what we got here. Interesting. You know, it's been seven minutes, so they're cooked. Hit these with a little salt. A lot of the batter has fallen through. Some has kind of just ripped off. Yeah, as I, oh, it's hot, damn it. I need a fork. As I try to pick it up too, the batter is slipping off, which is not a good sign. Really tender, so. Cooking time's right. Kind of weird. Slightly crispy shell, but a lot of the shell has already fallen off. Didn't really get brown. Just not optimal. Ultimately, when you're doing a wet batter, you need the vacuum, that instantaneous seal from a bunch of oil deep frying. For the next test, I wanted to just go a step above. So what I have right here are some chicken pieces marinated in buttermilk, and I'm just gonna coat those in flour. So it's not completely wet, but it's not breaded per se. And I'll do the same exact thing, throw them in the air fryer, coat them with a little bit of oil and air fry them for a few minutes. All right, we are just about done. Okay, so we've got, oh, the bottom is no good. The bottom's terrible. I'm gonna give it another minute. Here we go. Definitely an improvement. I mean, that's terrible. The batter is just crumbling off. This is really just a test of which one is better at this point. Oh, I've got no batter now. <laughs> Surprisingly, I actually think the wet batter is better than this one. 
but they both suck. So clearly when we aren't deep frying, when we don't have all that oil and you're using an air fryer, you can't rely on moisture. That has been proven. Unless one of you has figured out something, please comment below, but it hasn't worked for me in all of my trials using this air fryer. Now, what I have found works fantastic is your classic three-part breading, where you start with flour to get your chicken coated. That flour then makes the egg stick, which then holds on all of this breading. And now that breading is glued onto your chicken tender. With a nice coating of oil, you're gonna get a nice crispy, cohesive crust on your chicken tender. So the last control variable is time and temperature. I'll be using my go-to air fryer, the Kosori, that you've seen me use in every single past air fryer video. This is the Kosori Dual Blade 6.8 quart smart air fryer. And this thing is great because it's got the 6.8 quart capacity, which can fit a nice meal in there without overwhelming the basket and compromising on crispiness. And since we have dual heating elements on both the top and bottom, you don't actually have to shake the basket throughout the cooking process like most air fryers. And this air fryer has 12 customizable cooking functions, including chicken, which is set for 390 degrees. And that temperature works great for a chicken wing, but but I have found when you're breading something to just lower the temperature down to 380 to really protect that breading from burning. And with chicken tenders at this size, cooked at 380 degrees Fahrenheit, six to eight minutes with no preheating, just straight in the air fryer, is perfect to get a nice crispy crust, but still retain that juiciness and not overcook the chicken. All right, up first, we've got your classic panko. Now just a level up from your standard Italian breadcrumbs. Panko, of course, made from a Japanese fluffy white bread, so it's nice and crispy, and should, in theory, make a fantastic breading for test number one. Now, from here on out, we will be sticking to this three-part breading and just switching up that final ingredient. So first, we have all-purpose flour in a bowl, unseasoned. Then we have a few eggs whisked up nice and smooth, and then that final component for this test will be the panko breadcrumbs. There we go, here are our first tendies. Looking pretty solid, as you can see. Everything's just nice and stuck on there. Now, super important tip here when it comes to oil. You always wanna stick with one of these aerosol cans. Why? Well, because when I put oil on this, it's extremely uneven. There's no way to get that coated well, but, if I take an aerosol can, boom, even coating, not too much oil, which is important. We don't wanna load it and make it soggy. So here's how I'll cook all of the chicken tenders. I'll pop them in, spray them, just a nice even coat, flip them over, spray them again, 387 minutes. I'm getting nervous, so I'm gonna check it. Ooh, okay, okay, let's investigate here. I'm just kind of pressing in to see if they're firm. They're done. They didn't get as brown as I thought, but the edge browning is consistent on all of them. Nice and tender. Breading, holding perfectly. Crispy on all sides. Hit them with some salt. I'm gonna taste every single chicken tender with no sauce, and then I'll taste it with sauce. Oh, that's good. It's like light and crispy at the exact same time, which I feel like is the benefit of panko breadcrumbs. You have super fluffy white bread that's dried out to give you the crispiness. Yep. I'll tell you one thing, the air fryer is not a fucking joke. Like if you were at a banquet and you had deep fried ones and air fried ones right next to each other, you would not know the difference. So rating on the first one is always a bit tricky, especially because the only thing I'm comparing this to are those terrible fails from before. The batter is just crumbling off. Oh, it's hot, damn it. It is so light, the chicken is cooked perfectly. I would say my only critique is the color. Like it's a bit light for a chicken tender. It looks more like tempura. So I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. We're shifting it up a bit. We've got a bunch of nuts here. Now, nuts are something I have experimented with a bit over the years for breading, and I've had mixed results, but what I love about it is just added nutrition for something that could just be carbs. So I have a mixture here. I'm gonna use walnuts. 
products which have a great oil content, ideal for frying. Not nutritional yeast, but I've got some almonds here. Really great flavor and hardiness to balance it out. Now this is not a nut, it's a seed, sesame seed, but I'm gonna sprinkle some of those in, mainly for just flavor and the look as well. So I'm gonna take the walnuts and the almonds, I'll add those to my food processor and just start pulsing. And you're really trying to find that balance here. Not too fine, you want a little bit of texture, a little bit of coarseness, but not too coarse. I'll pour that out onto my plate. That's when I'll sprinkle in some sesame seeds. Those don't need to be processed. And then I'll go through the same breading process, just ending on that nut mixture. I mean, tell me those don't look so promising. I think the oil of the walnut is really gonna help in our favor here. Four big boys. Spray, flip, spray, 380, eight minutes. Here we go. Ooh. So the breading definitely stayed on there nice. Check that out, pretty epic breading. So this is one of those bites where you just have no idea what's coming your way. Here we go, we'll go plain. Okay, okay. A little healthy tasting, to be honest. I mean, it is a nut. Less crispy than I expected, but that doesn't make it a bad coating. Let me give it a taste with the mustard. A lot of things going on there. Definitely missing the crispiness, but the flavor is incredible. The breading held on extremely well, and it's a good bite. The nuts would be great if you mixed in something else, like a breadcrumb or something that at least is gonna get it a little crispier. So I'll give it a 8.2. We're lacking that crispiness that you need in a chicken tender, but still really unique. It's not crispy at all. No. It's kind of like mealy. Yeah, a little mealy, yeah. but it's not bad. It tastes really sweet. It'd probably be really good with a sauce of some kind. So. What do you mean? There's a sauce right there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> like another sauce? Now, one thing I have learned over the course of my air fryer days is that when you coat something in a product that already has oil cooked into it, like a potato chip, something that's already fried, you could use that residual oil to your advantage in the air fryer since we aren't deep frying. The more oil, potentially, the better. But I've never tried a chicken tender coated in potato chips, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'll add some potato chips to the food processor, blend that up until I get that nice balanced texture, fine with a little bit of coarseness, and I'll run the chicken through the three-part breading. You don't really comprehend the amount of oil in a potato chip until you pulverize it. Like those things are oily, but in this case, I really think that's gonna help us out. Plenty of oil on these things. All right, here we go, potato chips. Ooh, glistening with oil. Now obviously potato chips have plenty of salt in them, so I'm just gonna do a tiny bit. Let's see, underside. Oh yeah, that is a chicken nugget right there. Let's try one of these bad boys. Could be a little crispier, but a decent crust. Internals, still super juicy. We'll go clean first. Mmm. Mm. Wow, there is just a potato aroma throughout. That's nice. Let me give it a dip. Honey mustard. Whoa. Is there a honey mustard flavored potato chip? Here's what I'll say. Flavor is great. Potato is adding a lot in that category. It's almost a little too oily, to be honest, which takes it down a notch. I'll go 8.3 mm. out of 10. Pretty solid flavor, just not the crisp I'm looking for. Corn flakes. The ingredient that started off my obsession with chicken tenders in the air fryer, basically because I had a trusted source tell me that if you do encrusted cornflakes on chicken, your kids might just eat it and it worked for me. And then I just started trying every breading. So I know this is a viable option, but today we still need to test it. We need to see how it stacks up against all of these other breadings. So I'm gonna add the cornflakes to the food processor and just like all the other breadings, I'm really going for that nice middle ground between some fine and some coarse. So it coats well, but then you still have some of those nice chunks that kind of stick out and get super crispy. Then I'll pour that on the plate, take the chicken through the three-part breading, fire them up in the air fryer. 30 seconds left. Oh yeah, that is, that is beautiful. The oil is there, but the crispiness, it's just drier and more crispy than the potato chip. Yeah, I think those are perfect. Which one is the most perfect? That one is nice and juicy. Look how nice the breading stays on. Couldn't ask for much better. Hiya! 
come on. That is just as good as deep fried. It's insane. Definitely gonna need some salt. Very exciting stuff. Right away. The flavors there. There was something about the panko, just that first bite. There was a nice lightness and crispiness, but this one has that exact same crispiness with a lot more flavor. And it's damn near perfect. Let me give it a dip though. Just the thought of like a honey corn flake seems right to me. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That was unbelievable. That is certainly the best one so far. I'm giving that one a 9.7. I don't know what it's gonna take to get a 10, but it's certainly close. All right, so we've got a bonus one for you. And for all of these recipes, we are really trying to find approachable ingredients that you might have in your pantry that also just work well in the air fryer. And I was struggling to figure out this last one, but McGraw had an idea. <laughs> so if you parboil pasta and you know season it a bit and then cook it off in an air fryer, make a little chip out of it, I thought maybe it could make And a then dish. blend that. Yes. So I love the idea of the pasta chip. McGraw didn't know this, but that is a very popular air fryer item, but I don't think anyone has ever pushed it to the next level where you blend that up and make a breading. So we might be the first. So I've got some bow tie pasta here. I am just gonna boil some water, throw about two cups of pasta in there and boil that until it's al dente. It has a nice little chew to it. Drain off the pasta and then go right into a bowl with a little bit of olive oil and just coat that. And remember, we're keeping everything unseasoned till the very end. I'm gonna throw that in an air fryer at 390 for about five minutes at first and then just keep shaking it throughout the cooking process every few minutes minutes until it is nice and crispy. Then I'll pop them into the food processor and blend them until they are breading consistent. And then take them through the three part breading to get them ready for the air fryer. So what happened here was since I overloaded the air fryer with pasta chips, some of them were a little undercooked. And then when they went through the food processor, they just didn't quite blend up because they were a little too soft. But I'm starting to feel like it will work to my advantage because like the flakiness, have you ever seen anything so flaky? In we go for our final test. I swear this is it. Now there's a little bit of oil on the pasta chips already, but a little bit won't hurt it. All right, here we go. Whoa. Wow. I mean, that looks like KFC style crust right there. I mean, the golden brown effect on this. Ow, ow. Definitely the best crust, so <laughs> you're onto something. But the taste, oh my God. God, it locked in the juiciness. There's something just very strong about this crust. The salt, McGraw did test this last night. Oh, I don't know if I just cracked the code. Does it hold up? Hmm, interesting. A bit of dip. It's crispy. A little too hard, potentially in spots. It's still pretty damn good. I don't think the actual pasta flavor is doing so much on this breading. It's not bad. It's still crispy. I'll give it an 8.3. How does it compare to yours that you tested last night? Yeah. Same taste. It's not bad. It's no, it's no cornflake. No, it's not. <laughs> so when making the perfect chicken tender in the air fryer, this cornflake chicken tender being the winner can tell us everything we need to know. You are not frying, you are air frying. So what is most important is one, getting an ingredient that already has the color built in, like a cornflake, and already has the crispiness built in. So hopefully you learned a thing or two and you'll try out one of these techniques. And thank you again to Kosori for sponsoring this video. If you want more quick air fryer recipes, check out their channel below and I will see you in the next video.